Hey, this is Anita Hales, and I wanted to talk about something that uh, I feel is actually pretty important today. It's a little off from my usual topics, but uh, I think that it's something that uh, is relevant and pertinent to everyone in, in this country. Now, there was a, a woman that lived in Alaska, where I live, many years ago, Elizabeth Paratrovich. And many of her descendants still live in the area. Uh, I know some of them. She graduated from Ketchikan High School, where I graduated. And so I kind of have a connection with her in, in a small way. But uh, let me tell you a little bit about her story. Well, in 1945, this was the year that the U.S. and the Allies beat Hitler. Alaska was still a U.S. territory. It had been since 1867. Many soldiers were returning home, and women had become used to being in charge of things. They were accepting more responsibility outside the home, and uh, they had participated in the war effort in a big way. It was time. It was a time of change and optimism about the future. And during the war, Alaska natives has had had a positive effect on the war. There was a, a group called the Alaska Territorial Guard, who served without pay, to help protect Alaska from the Japanese threat. And a lot of people don't realize that Alaska was the only territory in the United States that was occupied by a foreign power during World War II. We actually had Japanese that invaded one of the Aleutian Islands and occupied it during, during World War II. And so these Alaska natives were very important in helping preserve U.S. territory. But the time was ripe for equality. Even though natives have bravely served without pay to defend the U.S., they were still discriminated against. Theaters, bars, and restaurants wouldn't allow natives. And one sign very famously said, no dogs or natives. And the capital of Alaska, Juneau, was particularly bad. Now, Elizabeth Paratovich was born on the 4th of July in 1911 in Petersburg, Alaska, which is not far from from uh, where I live in southeast Alaska. <clears throat> she was adopted and raised by Andrew and Mary Wanamaker, a Presbyterian minister, and his wife, and she graduated from Ketchikan High School. She attended Sheldon Jackson College in Sitka and Western College in Bellingham, Washington, and she married Roy Paradovich in 1931, with whom she had three children. So she was a very well-educated woman. But they had temporarily moved to Oklahoma, and when they moved back to Alaska, they moved to Juneau. And Juneau was the last straw for Elizabeth. The anti-discrimination discrimination in Juneau was very harsh. They tried to purchase a decent home in a nice area of Juneau and were not allowed to. So off to the territorial legislature, they went to argue for native rights. Now, during the debate, there was a territorial legislator by the name of Senator Alan Shattuck. And he said, who are these people who are barely out of savagery, who want to associate with us whites with 5,000 years of recorded civilization behind us? And... Elizabeth's testimony is considered the key factor in passing the anti-discrimination laws. She very famously said, I would not have expected that I, who am barely out of savagery, would have to remind gentlemen with 5,000 years of recorded civilization behind them of our Bill of Rights. When my husband and I came to Juneau and sought a home in a nice neighborhood where our children could play happily with our neighbor's children, we found such a house and arranged to lease it. When the owners learned we were Indians, they said no. Would we be compelled to live in the slums? Elizabeth was very eloquent and batted down every argument against 
the anti-discrimination legislation. She said, no law will eliminate crimes, but at least you as legislators can assert to the world that you recognize the evil of the present situation and speak your intent to help us overcome discrimination. And in honor of this woman who has been largely ignored by the uh, equal rights folks in the United States for many, many years, has finally been recognized with the issuance of a $1 U.S. coin that you can see right here. And uh, so it's it's high time that this, this uh, woman has received the recognition recognition that she deserves for her influence in passing America's first anti-discrimination law. So congratulations to Elizabeth, Elizabeth Paratovich, I can't talk today, and her family. And we hope that the people will continue to pursue anti-discrimination among all people. And that's the end of my show today. I hope that you'll subscribe to my channel and check out the um, links that I have and check out the different uh, topics that I discuss in my YouTube channel. And I hope this has been helpful to you. So you have a wonderful day and uh, have a great year this year in 2020. Bye-bye.